Around the world, people are putting something back into their communities in sustainable and innovative ways. Welcome to World Challenge 2007, where people can have principles and make a profit. Now in its third year, World Challenge travels the globe in its search for businesses and projects that are about more than just the pursuit of profit. And you have the chance to decide which ones win fabulous awards to reinvest in their enterprises. Each week we profile two of the dozen finalists and you can vote for your favourite at www.theworldchallenge.co.uk That's www.theworldchallenge.co.uk In this programme we go to Afghanistan where handmade luxury soap might prove to be an antidote to opium production. And in Brazil, how fishing communities are cultivating seaweed used in cosmetics to combat the declining fish catch. Southern Afghanistan is the lawless centre of world opium production. Poppy cultivation has gone up 60% in the last year, according to the UN. As farmers claim, it's the only viable cash crop. Journalist Sarah Chase came to report on the war and has stayed on at extraordinary risk to help find an alternative to the poppy. She runs a cooperative with Afghan people to make high-class soap from local herbs, despite the security situation. Any family home in Kandahar in southern Afghanistan has at least one Kalashnikov. This is a place where the last line of defense is yourself. Sarah's home in Kandahar, southern Afghanistan, provides a livelihood for a dozen local men and women who make soaps and body oils for the high-end market in the USA. This isn't an industrial process. The product isn't an industrializable product. The whole point of this is that it's a hand-fashioned luxury item for a high-end market. With a modest grant from talk show host Oprah Winfrey's foundation, among others, Sarah set up Argand. It's a cooperative with the goal of generating income for the Afghan people without resorting to illegal drug production. The full-time workers earn about $160 a month against a national average of around $30. Argand is now selling to 14 shops in the US and Canada. The income enables Argand to guarantee high prices for farmers of legal crops like almonds and pomegranates. It's a small project showing that it's possible to find alternatives to the poppies that fuel crime and misery throughout the world. Soap making starts by gathering the raw materials locally. To do so, Argand has to run the gauntlet of the well-armed insurgents. It's especially risky to be American and a woman. I keep my windows a little bit, you know. It's not a good idea to have your windows all the way down. There haven't been many attacks in a couple of years of grenades. Guess what that is on that side. It's not a lot of marijuana use here. There's some. There's little control of illegal drug production. Many alternative schemes have been tried. Sarah's is one of the few to have run the course. Assalamu alaikum. Jor, pakhair, shpiwaraz, pakhair, saak mashallah. I love this. It has a kind of absinthe. It's a relative of absinthe. We can't get quite the precise odor of it in, dis- in distillation. It, it, The distillation accentuates the um, menthol. Here's the artemisia growing. This is the herb we gathered. I want to go up to Hor, which is another province north of here, but we were going to go this spring, but it's just not. You'd have to go to Herat and drive down, and it's, it's dicey, it's dicey. Back in the relative safety of the compound, the process begins to turn these plentiful raw materials into soap worthy of luxury boutiques. The women at Argand prepare the plant material, 
retaining the leaves and thinner stems, which contain the most essential oils. Water in this drum is heated and turned to steam. The natural pressure forces it through the plant material. When it condenses, a film of essential oil floats at the top. There's Artemisia cena, which goes into our elixir of Artemis soap. And there's Artemisia persica, which is a little bit more menthol smelling. Apricot kernel oil is great for your skin and it's a nice light oil too. This is our secret ingredient because this stuff is absolutely dynamite for your skin. There was a University of Michigan study last year that showed that it um, stimulates regeneration of the epidermis, pomegranate seed oil, and pomegranate skin stimulates regeneration of the dermis, which is the layer below, and we put it in um, all of our oils. Aniseed is 7% oil, and when pressed, the oil is released. Other ingredients include coconut oil, almond, and sodium hydroxide, or lye. The mixture is heated to around 35 degrees centigrade and left to harden overnight. But the process doesn't end here. So first thing in the morning, Isa comes early and takes those blocks of soap that uh, the men cut the previous morning and she grates it on this grater, which we actually had constructed specifically for us in the bazaar. The grated soap is to be melted back down, and it's at this stage where the colours and essential oils are added to give each product line a distinct fragrance and look. This company is very important to me. I like it very much. Why do I like it? Well, it's very strange. No product from Afghanistan has so far been sold abroad. No one in Afghanistan could produce something that would sell abroad. So this is very important. It's very interesting to see that we can make something that sells in other countries. Even by working with a foreigner, Sarah's staff are risking their lives. The women, in particular, are afraid to be identified. The men Sarah works with are a little freer to talk, but for security, we agreed not to use their surnames. Our aim is to provide the conditions for farmers to make a profit. We want to encourage them in what they are doing. We don't want them to be disappointed by not making a profit from what they have grown. We do our best. I've learned a lot of things by working here, like how to work in a cooperative way. Now, when I employ people to work on my farm, I use the same approach. Here, for example, there is a great atmosphere. We all work together as friends. Finally, the soap is shaped by hand. Each bar is unique and sells for nine US dollars. That's a lot of money in a country where the average household income is $300 a year. I'm actually shaping each bar of soap by hand. And unfortunately, today, the weighing part happened a little bit late. And so this is much stiffer than it should be, and I am going to be bathing in sweat by the end of this process. But each one of our bars is hand molded, just about all of them by yours truly. I make it a little bit fatter here, and then it thins off. This morning, the women polished it, gave it the first polish. And so you can see the surface is much smoother and even a little bit uh, shiny. And so then they bring it down here and put it down for its cure. Argand is a small cooperative, but it points to one way of generating income sustainably and legally. I don't believe that we're a kind of magic bullet that could in and of ourselves alone solve the opium problem in southern Afghanistan, you know. But I think also part of the role that we play is as a model. With a waiting list of 70 outlets hoping to stock the soap, demand outstrips supply. So if it wins the World Challenge, Argand hopes to double production within a year. 
As a cooperative, the assets are the joint property of the members, so there's a real incentive for everyone to help the business grow. So what we need to do is buy a piece of land and build a building um, to house an expanded production. And we have an area in mind. If we were to win this prize money, it would go directly into our land fund. In part two, a crop with a difference, how underwater farming is keeping a Brazilian village afloat. <laughs>